making history and making maximum impact on earth flows from the dimension of wisdom, the dimension of strategy. Therefore, anybody, both Christian and non-Christian, make history on earth. Is it true? We see that. We see sometimes the unsaved are the head and, and not the tail. Now, they might not be going to heaven, but while they're on earth, they can be making history. Some of us in here, we might be going to, to heaven, but not making history while we're on this earth. I want to give you the five that I found that are common denominators. The first one is they had an idea. Began with an idea, and you might not know that a God idea, any good idea, travels faster than the speed of 286,000 miles per second squared. Just faster than the speed of light. How many have ever had a, a great idea? How fast did it enter your mind? Just, you, you can't even count it. And so, history makers are those who paid the price for a great idea. Took the time to look into it, ask the Lord. But history makers don't just get ideas they have figured out how to convert invisible idea into tangible product or ministry, if you're a believer. The ability to take an idea and turn it into a tangible product on earth actually comes from God. And the word became flesh, and the word became flesh. The invisible word became flesh, the Greek word sarx, meaning tangible substance. God is in the business of taking invisible promises, ideas, and dreams, and having you turn them into tangible product. And when you do that, it's called leadership. Amen? Amen. <laughs> okay, so that's number one, idea to execution. Number two, the second common denominator I found between all history makers so they all had significant challenge or crisis they had to overcome. You heard it from Pastor Rick that, that betrayal, Apostle Rick, betrayal preceded great promotion in leadership. They all, had, they all were faced with some kind of tremendous challenge or crisis, and how they responded to it determined whether they would uh, make history, make impact. They either came under it and crumbled, or they fought their way or walked their way or God gave them a grace to help them overcome that crisis. Whether it's Joyce Meyer and growing up in, a, in an abusive home and she was able to turn that into a ministry that now sets others free. They all have a story. Whether you're Michael Jordan and cut from the basketball team how many times but he chose to keep going. Here it is. It's in the choosing to keep going and overcome that you develop a thick skin. And it's the thick skin and tenacity that allows you to lead in your season of tomorrow, in your calling. You right now don't have the skin you need necessarily to lead in the fullness of your calling. So God will allow things to take place for you to meet the challenge and develop that, that thick skin that sets you apart from the pack. And we call that leadership. You, you become a leader. They choose to uh, overcome and meet life's challenges and they develop that thick skin. Now, what are we on? Three? Okay, the, the, last, uh, the last couple come from a study on leadership and they're called the factors of success, the factors of success. And by the way, I didn't mention, but in James, count it all joy, my brethren, when you go through various trials and tribulations, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. You cannot have endurance without resistance. So God will apply measured resistance so that you can develop endurance, and it's the endurance that you need to lead. So number three, I want to give now uh, the three factors of success that are also, all three are common denominators in making history. And I hope you're writing some of these down. But uh, the, the third one I think we're on is knowledge. And the study showed that 10% of all success comes by what you know. This is a Harvard study. Only 10%. 
But it's not just knowledge you went and Googled. The kind of knowledge that makes for excellence in leadership is knowledge that you had to pay a price for. You had to learn something. You had to pick up a book. After you had hands laid on and you did some altar time, you had to go back to school. You had to open your Bible. You had to study to show yourself approved. That knowledge is, is, is a 10% contributing factor. Now, this is a secular study. Here's the next one. You'll find this one fascinating. And it counts for 40% of maximum impact. Here it is. Secular study. Character. Amazing. That character would matter so much. And, and in the church, we teach, you know, charisma will get you there. But it's character that, that will keep you there. And, and I've seen this over and over again in my own life and in the life of other history makers and influential people. And I, I remember where I was. I was sitting in an airport when watching the TV there that they have at the gate. And I heard the journalist who was watching Tiger Woods' recent game and he was at the side of the fairway vomiting, back pain, just kind of, you remember that season he went through, and if you don't know who Tiger Woods is, greatest golfer perhaps of all time, and he's in this season, and I remember what the journalist said. She said, Tiger is a genius, but his game has not been the same since his extramarital affairs became public. Without saying it, she was tapping into the, the things that go on the, behind the scenes have the power to destroy leadership. And, and it, what it'll go after, the enemy will go after legacy. You see some guys, they make it right there to the top. And even after they've passed on, they're hallowed as great leaders. But then after they pass on, something comes out and the devil goes after your leadership legacy. So character, 40%. The last one really surprised me, and it's, it's, it's very helpful to us, a factor contributing to those people that make history and do unusual things. And it's 50% uh, for the mathematicians in here. But the 50% contributor to all success comes down to one word, and it's environment. And when we talk about environment, we're talking about those who have learned to create environment around them that bring the best out of them. They're the ones that go to church because they know they need that weekly environment. They're the ones that show up at prayer meeting because they know the environment of heaven is forming them. They are the ones that know how to create a study schedule. They know how to take a day off to invest in their body so that they can perform the rest of the days of the week. Environment is one of the most powerful factors in transforming and creating leaders. So much so that when somebody who couldn't function in any routine or, or, and chose to uh, be corrupt in life and steal and commit theft and fraud, once they're in prison, they begin to do something with the routine regimented environment and the guy that couldn't even get up in the morning gets a law degree. It's the power of environment. And so I've noticed that history makers are people who are not thermostats, uh, sorry, not thermometers, they are thermostats. They know when to get up, they know what to do when, and they create a prison of self-development that they live in that is constantly bringing out the best in them. They all say the same thing. I live a life of adding value to myself, and I end up adding value to others. And God operates this way. That's why once a month I take a prayer and fasting retreat for three days because I know I need to rest and I need blocks of time to invest in myself so that I'm living out of the overflow every month. And so those, those factors, the first one idea to execution, the second one was uh, the, the pressure and 
and trial, how they overcome. The third was knowledge, what you pay the price to know. The fourth uh, was character, and the fifth would be environment. If you can manage those in your life, you will make impact, and it'll be an impact that outlives you.